It's lunchtime in Whitemark, Flinders Island, and the winds off Bass Strait are carrying the aroma of a Flinders Island delicacy, wallaby sandwich. Hey, Mikey, how's it going? Good, mate, how are you? Good, good. Can I get the wallaby sandwich? Yeah. Mikey Yo has just begun producing his wallaby schnitzel sandwich for locals and visitors to Whitemark, the unofficial capital of Flinders Island. Population, 170. Mikey has been on the lookout for locally sourced ingredients for his food trucks sandwich. Like a good sandwich is bloody hard to come by, especially like with all the ingredients. You might get good mayo, good tomato, but crappy bread or not so much good ham, a bit salty, a bit cheap. But a good sanger is a great menu item to have, I reckon. That's when the idea for a wallaby sandwich came bounding into his imagination. It's quite a lean meat, so it has to be cooked well. And it's in abundance here on the island. We're lucky enough to have the abattoir, and they do a lot of wallaby. They export to uh, the mainland Taz as well. Um, But it's a great, great choice of meat. It's healthy and it's sustainable. Tasmanian wallaby meat has become a lean, green protein of choice for many Flinders Island locals. The Flinders Island abattoir processes around 300 wallabies a week, all sourced from the island. It's thought there are tens of thousands of wallabies on the island. Many end up here at the Flinders Island abattoir. My father, he goes out and shoots and brings them back so we can process here. Is there something about it being so local that makes it so delicious? Oh, I do believe there's a thing called the, the salt grass. Like the salt in the air comes on the grass and it, it just makes everything so much more flavorful. It's an opinion shared by Flinders Island local and cooking enthusiast Lyndon Evans, who shoots and smokes his own wallaby meat. The wallaby tonight you've caught as well yourself? Oh yeah, shoot mine, yeah. Going bad if you can't shoot a wallaby here. They're on the front lawn if you're lucky enough. (laughs) There's plenty of them here. But I get them off the farmers where there's green grass in there. And you understand the roo over here tastes different than in anywhere else because it's the salt air. So the salt air it's what they eat. And they've got grass this high in the paddocks. I mean, they've got the best of all worlds there. They've got the best front garden in the world. So the kangaroo here and wallaby taste saltier? Different. Not salty, different. It's much, much sweeter meat. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very popular. People are starting to buy it, take it, to, take it as tasty and eat it. So, yeah. We've yeah. got the abattoirs over here now just opening up, and they send about a tonne and a half a week out. Mm. Boned out, see? Back at the food truck, hungry customers are waiting on orders. And we're in the box seat for a behind-the-scenes view of what goes into Mikey's wallaby sandwich. I'm just tempering some oil, getting up to around 180 degrees to fry the snitty in. And at the moment, it's just veggie oil. That's the only kind of oil I use for this schnitzel. It's bloody good. And tell us about the schnitzel. Yeah, no, it's it's wallaby sirloin, which has been butterflied and bashed out and then it's uh, lightly seasoned and then crumbed in panko crumbs. Nice and crispy. Nice and crispy, it has to be golden, but can't be overcooked. So yeah, what you want here is a nice, nice bubbly, sizzling away. Not too hot. No one burn it before it cooks. Just constantly turn it over. This should only take not even nine seconds. Wallaby can be served with uh, even rare sometimes if it's tempered well. Depending on your customer, you can serve it. The idea behind the panko is that it's a larger crumb, so it gives it a lot more surface area to be fried. Um, less burn time, might fly than something like this. So that's how I kind of like the wallaby cook. And then I'll let it rest also. Just drain. I'm always seasoned with sea salt from my Do you reckon condiments on the top and the bottom of a sandwich is a good idea? I think so, yeah. Uh, for me, I don't really like butter, so I tend to stay away from butter. So just a little bit of cos there. And we have our dressed white cabbage. Crumb 
inside of vinegar, a few herbs, salt, pepper. Top of that, we go our pickles, top side here. Let's say you can go as many as you like. Oh, you can go about six. A little bit of sippy. A little bit of Dijon mustard, mustard, vinegar, olive oil as well. Then we have our little quality strip that goes on top. Is texture important in a sandwich? You've got the soft white bread. Yeah, Tell us about the texture, Mikey. So, for me, uh, you, number one, you need texture when you're eating, right? Whether it be 100% soft and silky and smooth, or whether it be crunchy and have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of texture to it, it's, it's all about texture. Um, but the Wallaby Snit Sanger has to have that crunchy, hot, salty, sour, soft, all, all the kind of amount of flavors that you'd like in the sandwich and the, the white bread completes it, I think. According to the internet, there's no problem that a sandwich can't fix. But how does it taste? Mm. Pretty good. You shouldn't eat on camera. Right. <laughs> Not bad, Mikey. Pretty good. I reckon that's all right. Hear that crunch.